We're now joined by Professor Beki Mgomezulu from the University of uh, the Western Cape, who's going to help us make sense of it all. Prof, good evening. Thanks very much uh, for joining us. Well, if one looks at uh, or the statements that were made by members of the Federal uh, Council in the morning, but also the statements uh, made by both the acting mayor, Ian Nelson, Nielsen, and the speaker, Derek Smith, it would seem that uh, the DA uh, is determined to move on, or is it a, a facade? Uh, no, thank you very much, Mr. Mbogo, and to your listeners as well. I think that uh, the DA has done Patricia Delil a disservice. Uh, what we saw happening uh, uh, today, in fact, uh, is something that has been long coming. But then uh, from what we can see or what we can gather, uh, the DA was determined to get rid of Patricia Delil at all costs. And the reasons that have been provided by uh, Natasha Mazol and then, of course, James Self, to say that they are not kicking her out as per the clause that was that is now known as the delete clause, and nor are they kicking her out on the grounds that she has, in fact, been found guilty of the allegations laid against her. Interestingly, they are kicking her out based on an interview she gave to Radio 702 on the 26th of August, saying that she wants to clear her name first, after which then she is prepared to resign from the party, which is very ridiculous, in fact, if you look at it from a distance. But then, of course, they are determined to get rid of her, and they want to close this chapter. But from where the lady is standing, I think it's far from over, and I totally agree with her, that she mustn't take this line down, as um, uh, uh, Helen Ziller's book said, not without a fight. So she must fight it. Is she must fight it out, not because she wants to go back to the DA, because she has no home there, but just to set the record straight. Uh, take us back, uh, Prof. Take us back when you say they are determined to get rid of her at all costs, and the, uh, the, what they have used now as the reason, which is the interview she gave on 702, that, the fact that that is, in fact, uh, a build-up, several things that happened before. Take us back. What are the sort of things that gave you that impression? Yeah, interestingly, Mr. Mbogo, I've, I've had a number of interviews with a number of uh, media houses. And one of the points I've been making is that uh, the moment the DA elected uh, Bongosima Tigizela uh, to be uh, the leader of the party in the Western Cape, and the moment they elected Betty Fritz to be his deputy, uh, the writing was on the wall that uh, Patricia Delil had no future in the DA. Because you have Bongosima Tigizela bringing with him the black voters in the Western Cape, and then you have Betty Fritz bringing with him the colored vote. In that case, then, Patricia Delil became dispensable, as it were. So that was one of the things that had the developments that happened. And then uh, to try and get rid of her, following or operating within the legal framework, what the DA did then, it instituted a number of um, cases against her, and then there were parallel processes that were happening. Ordinarily, if I'm accused of something, you have to have a chart sheet and then list the items on which I'm accused of. But in this case, with parallel processes, one of which, of course, was to take the case to, to counsel, uh, hoping that um, uh, there will be a vote of no confidence against Patricia Delil, and then she survived uh, by one vote. And the DA was not impressed. So then they had to go and then look at other options, and then those options then included those parallel processes saying uh, she has brought the party into disrepute, uh, she has, um, she's accused of maladministration, a, a long list of cases. So then if you look at all of those situations, you can tell that uh, uh, the bottom line was that uh, they wanted her out, but then they didn't want to be found wanting because they, were, they, they uh, in fact, uh, anticipated a situation where there might be litigation against the party. So that is why they even came up with the so-called delete clause, because the clause was, um, in fact, um, uh, added on uh, the uh, DA's constitution specifically uh, to assist the DA leadership, more especially the Federal Council and, of course, the, the Western Cape um, the Caucus, to get rid of delay by following the rules. But then even that clause, you cannot apply it to something that is already on course. Because if you, if you do so, then it means you are applying the clause retrospectively, which then becomes illegal. So I think it's in that context that I say the DA wanted Patricia Tillel out, and they were trying to find ways of doing it within the ambit of the law. And now they've found this loophole uh, on that interview, and then they said, okay, by the way, 
she has in fact summarily kicked herself out of the party. All we are doing is just to make it official. There are people who say, Prof, uh, this Dalil uh, episode read together with uh, a few days ago the whole uh, uh, Musi Maimana's comments versus Natasha Amazon and uh, Amazon, and before then the, uh, the 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 problems within the various groupings at the uh, conference of the DA that took place here in Gauteng not uh, too long ago around transformation and so on. That all of these things are actually speaking to, to what is essentially the beginning of the DA's unraveling to you. Do you share that view? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. In fact, I'm, I'm glad that you are mentioning this issue of transformation because for me, the main reason why people like uh, Lindy Omazibogo left the DA was specifically because of transformation. As you would recall, in September 2013, before the 2014 elections, some of us were already making uh, the, 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 the argument that uh, uh, Lindy Omazibogo has no future in the DA. And the reason why I said so at the time was because there was the so-called black caucus within the DA. And they were saying that uh, uh, they, they, they have issues in the manner in which uh, the DA is handling uh, this uh, transformation agenda. And then, of course, uh, 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 the, the conservative elements in the DA are singing a different tune, and the progressive ones are singing another tune. But the DA was strategic at the time because they kept everything under the carpet until after the elections. And then immediately thereafter, we were told that um, Lindy Omasbogo uh, is going to study uh, in the U.S., which, in fact, was not the main reason. And now this time around, Patricia Delil has been pushing transformation within the DA, and she has been doing it uh, with some members of the DA, but of course those who are conservative did not buy into that idea. So those divisions were already there. And now uh, you, you had a recent incident uh, uh, during the passing of uh, um, uh, Mama uh, Matigizela Mandela, and then Patricia Delil was seen at a, um, a memorial service organized by the EFF. And then the DA was not happy with the two uh, because they were grabbing anything they could lay hands on. Then they said she should have informed the party that she's going to attend that memorial service. So you, you can see a party which was desperate to act but then wanted to have something of substance to put on the table. So I, I, I totally agree with that notion.